Hey mamas, today we're going to be sewing a basic diaper start to finish and I've got a prepped newborn size here but in my blog I've shown how to do it with just with just flannel. You can use anything for this. You could even hand sew this. This is only using a straight stitch. There's nothing fancy about it. This is how you would assemble almost every kind of a diaper. There's very few exceptions. It's basically like sewing a pillow. You know, if you're gonna be doing a turned and top stitch diaper. So you're gonna sew around the outside with the outsides on the inside, and then you're gonna be turning it, and then you're gonna be sewing the stuff on the, on the outside, which involves your elastic casings and any sort of top stitching you might do. So we're gonna be doing that. You just need two layers. Whatever a diaper has going for it that makes it different than another diaper is usually part of the pre-prep. So if it was an all-in-one, you might prepare your outer just like you would for a pocket diaper, but you know, with pull. But on the inside, you would probably have other things done. You might have pockets, you might have a soaker surged in. All of that is part of your pre-prep. You always will end it with this same step. So you'll have your inner, however it's prepared, or if you want to be practicing with flannel, it's a, still a totally usable diaper. You can make a fitted shell or a flannel pocket diaper. And then you would have whatever your outer is. In this case, I have put some snaps with some backing material through a layer of cotton fleece. This is going to be a newborn turned fitted. If you're going to be doing a pocket diaper that has a back, back pocket, you would sew around the outside of the back and leave a turning hole and then that turning hole will become your pocket. But if you're going to be doing a fitted, then you can have your turning hole wherever you want. I tend to do them at the front so that it's easier to do my elastic casings at the back. So many options though, you can really do them so many ways. That's the only thing that changes is where your turning hole is. If it's a pocket diaper that has like an envelope pocket or a slit pocket, then you wouldn't need a turning hole at all because you would turn through your pocket opening, which would have been prepared on your other diaper. But today, pretend like you just have two pieces of t-shirt or two pieces of flannel or two towel pieces that you just want to practice sewing. You take your pieces, you cut them out to whatever pattern you want. I have a link to my vlog patterns in the description and you just start sewing. So for this case, I'm going to have my turning hole in the middle of the front. I've got my straight stitch set to a fairly wide setting because this is a fairly thick fabric. You can use any needle you want because we're not sewing with pull. As long as you leave a big enough hole to turn through. I use the outside of my universal foot as kind of a guide for how far to sew from the edge. It works really well. So if there's anywhere where you got a little uneven and you went a little further in, like here I had a little bit of an issue with my back lining up, you can go and trim any excess. If you've got any sharp curves on your pattern that you're doing, it's helpful to, to cut a little bit more off in the curves. But if you hug the edge, it should be pretty even, you know, throughout, it shouldn't be too much off. The only place where it's harder to turn is through any sharp curves. So sometimes places like here at the front where it's a little bit sharper, I might cut a little bit extra off. You also don't want too much bulk around your elastics, but this isn't too much. This is a fine amount. Okay. Tiny little snips. Now there's your basic inside out diaper. You got your front, you got your back. You take it and you just turn it. So you've got everything nice and turned. 
looks a lot narrower and longer because the shape changes when you cut off that outer edge, right? When, by turning it. Basic step. The next thing that I do is I sew my elastic casing channels. So for a thicker fabric like this, you want to leave a little more space just because of the thickness of the fabric. If you're using a thinner fabric, then you only need to leave just a little bit more than the width of whatever elastic you're using. I tend to use the stretch right 3 8 inch elastic, but you can also use 1 quarter inch elastic if you're using a thin fabric. Poly braided is better than woven. So for me, it's a thicker fabric and it's a fairly thick elastic. So when I do my casing, I'm going to make sure that my channel is at least as wide as that fabric plus that elastic. So the fabric width is about that much and then the elastic is there. So when I sew my casing, I want to make sure that it's no closer than that. You can kind of eyeball it, but usually it's about, so this is a 3 8 inch. I'd want to do at least a half inch for even a thin fabric. So for this one, it might be just a tad over a half inch wide. So that's what my first elastic casing channel looks like. Just an even line along the side. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side and across the middle of the back. So now you've got all your channels sewn in. No matter what the pattern is, it's the same assembly process. So now we're going to take our elastic. And I like to use a bodkin, but you could also use a safety pin. just grab onto your elastic. Feed it into that first channel. I like to feed my elastic up over my seam allowance, but you don't always have good control over that. With a pull diaper, it's more important to get it up and over, but with the fitted, it really doesn't matter. And then when you get to the top of the channel, you can release your bodkin. If you're more confident pinning your elastic in first, you can do that as well. You don't want to accidentally pull out your elastic. So. My elastic is up a little bit beyond my casing. As long as it's at least about a quarter inch above it, you're fine. You don't want it to be right against the edge. You want to make sure you've got a good grip on it. And then you're going to take your sewing machine, a little bit tighter of a stitch than you were using before. Mine's at like the three, three and a half right now. It was at four before. And you want to just sew it down at the top of the casing there. So now you've got a nice solid stitch through the elastic. And we're going to go to the other end 
And we're just gonna take it and we're gonna pull that elastic as tight as it can go so that you get a good feel for how tight that is. So now you're gonna grab it right at the end of that casing. And you're gonna pull it as tight as it can go. And you're gonna let it snap back just a little bit, about three quarters of the way. So this is fully stretched. You're gonna wanna go back till it's about three quarters. And that's where you're gonna wanna pinch it off so that you've got a lot of stretch in there, but it's not fully stretched. Like if it was really tight and had no stretch, then it would be too tight on the baby's legs. That would be too tight. You wanna make sure that it's got significant amount of stretch, but it goes all the way straight easily. It's really something that you gotta get a feel for. As long as it stretches all the way out easily and still snaps back quite a lot, you're good. So while that's full stretch or a little bit less than full, that's fine. At the back, it can be as little as 50%. And now you might be thinking, well, how do you make that even on the other side, right? Well, that's the easiest part. Once you have that first side done, you're gonna use that first one to measure against the, the other side. So you don't need to worry about getting it exactly right or taking a measurement because it'll basically do it for itself. And this is a diaper, it doesn't have to be pretty, especially your early diapers. They're for practice, they're not for beauty. Even an ugly diaper works just as well. Especially if it's a fitted diaper, because the point is just to absorb pee and poo. So it really doesn't matter what it looks like. You can use your ugliest, most stained fabrics to practice with. Okay, so the way that we make these then match up without measuring is you can see how long it is now that it's been sewn down, right? I mean, it's pretty obvious. When it snaps back, that's how a relaxed piece of elastic is. So now that it's sewn down on this side, we just take this piece and we pull it until it's the same length. I fold them in half like this. So here's the top of my casing. Here's the bottom. We line up the bottoms together and we just pull the top until it's right the same as the other side. So for me, see how it's all bunched up on this side? Right about there. See, another lined up. It's the easiest way. And now you're gonna have perfect even leg, leg elastics. One leg's not gonna be looser than the other. And you can pin it in place, since we're practicing with fitteds anyway, or you can just, you know, eyeball it. And then you just take your elastic, now that it's sewn down, and you cut it off at the end. And now when you even out that, when you stretch it out, it all puckers in evenly and you've got two perfectly equal length leg elastics. See? And now for the back, you're gonna run it through and not quite as tight. It's, you don't need as much tightness across the waist and it'll fit for longer without, without it being so tight. If you're using a safety pin, it's easier if you can reach your hand inside, but if you're using a bodkin, you can feed it through. So if your hands don't fit inside, it's fine. But if your hands don't fit inside, 
the neck of the diaper through the crotch is probably too narrow. A wider crotch is actually going to be better, even if the baby seems really small. A wider crotch will contain better, it'll hold a bigger soaker. It, it's better to have it go like this than to just be straight across. So a wider crotch doesn't mean it won't fit between the baby's legs, it just means it'll have more room to hold stuff. So there's one side. Now you're gonna take it and you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna pull the elastic a little bit tight, but for across the back, it doesn't need to be as tight as through the legs. So something like that is plenty. It's good to not make a complete stash before your baby's born, because you might make the wrong diapers. You'll learn, you'll learn pretty early on. I would say make a, just a couple of each diaper at first and then make more of what you think that you actually are gonna use more of. Newborns tend to do best with fitteds and prefolds and prefitteds, and just a couple covers. Older babies can handle the all-in-ones and the pockets better, and they don't need as many changes. Tiny babies need to be changed more often, but they don't need as much absorbency in each one. So, you know, it's a learning curve. If you've been doing this for a while though, you get a good feel for what works for your kid. I didn't start sewing diapers until my son was already a toddler and before my daughter was born. And then I learned that all the diapers that were the best for him were not the best for her. So now you've got your back elastic, which is looser than your leg elastics. You've got your nice even leg elastics. You've got whatever prep you had to do. In this case, I did some snaps. You could have your inner done, the outer could be pull, the inner could be whatever, or you could be using two pieces of a t-shirt or two pieces of towel or two pieces of flannel. It's all the same. At this point, you're gonna be closing your turning hole unless you're doing a pocket diaper and then you'll have to prep your pocket shape. But for this basic diaper, we're gonna be closing that turning hole with our top stitching. So you make sure everything's lined up all flat you tuck in the edge with that same amount of seam allowance that you sewed all around on the outside. You line up your top and your bottom pieces and you can use clips or you can use pins. Got all your clips holding it nice and, straight, nice and straight. Everything's nice and flat. Now you're gonna do your top stitching around the front and you're gonna use that top stitching to close that turning hole. So there's your closed turning hole. And you don't have to do top stitching at the back, but I like to. See how the inside looks at this point? Now what I do at this point is I also top stitch around the wings to make the wings nice and flat. But it's not necessary for a fit, it's more of an aesthetic. So now you just cut off your extra pieces of 
thread and clean up your finish. And mine's not perfect. I wasn't being super careful, but it's super functional. So now you've got your nice even wings. You've got your nice flat front. You've got your interior, your exterior. They could be any fabric. It doesn't really matter for this. And then for mine, since I'm doing a snap diaper, the next thing I'm gonna do is just add my umbilical snap down because this is a newborn size and add my wing snaps. And you can see how I fit my soaker in. I just make sure it's right below the elastic at the back. It fits into that nice pocket there. So now the basic diaper is a newborn fitted. There's your finished fitted diaper. Happy sewing.